Hello and welcome to theCUBE. I'm Dave Nicholson, Chief Technology Officer at theCUBE, and we're here for a very special CUBE conversation with Andy Brown from Broadcom. Andy, welcome to theCUBE. Tell us a little about yourself. Well, a little bit my, about myself. My name is Andy Brown. I'm uh, currently the Senior Director of Software Architecture and Performance Analysis here within the Data Center Solutions Group at Broadcom. Um, I've been doing that for about seven years. Prior to that, I held various positions within the system architecture, systems uh, engineering and uh, IC development organization, uh, but ultimately, uh, as well as spent some time uh, uh, in our support organization and managing our support team, uh, but ultimately have uh, landed in uh, the architecture organization uh, as well as performance analysis. Great. So a lot of what you do is around improving storage performance. Tell us more about that. So let me give you a brief history of uh, storage from, from my perspective. Um, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, I, I go back about 30 years in my career and that uh, would have started uh, back in the NCR microelectronics days and uh, originally with uh, parallel SCSI. So that would be if anyone would remember the, the 5380 controller, which was one of the original parallel SCSI controllers uh, that existed and uh, built by NCR micro, microelectronics at the time. I've, I've seen uh, the advent of parallel SCSI, uh, a stint of fiber channel, uh, ultimately leading into uh, the serialization of, those, of, of the SCSI standard into SAS, uh, as well as SATA, uh, and then ultimately leading to uh, NVMe uh, protocols and uh, the advent of flash, moving from hard drives into a flash-based media. Uh, and as well, on, on, that's on the storage side, on the host side, uh, moving from parallel interfaces, uh, ISA, if everybody could remember that, uh, moving to PCI, PCI Express, uh, and that's where we land today. So Andy, we're square in the middle of the era of both NVMe and SAS. What kinds of challenges does that overlap represent? Well, I, I think, you know, obviously we've seen SAS around for a while. Uh, it was the conversion from parallel into a serial attached SCSI, uh, and, um, that really, uh, uh, SAS brings with it the ability to uh, connect a, really a high number of devices um, and uh, was, was kind of the original scaling of devices and, and really uh, also enabled, uh, was, was one of the things that, that enabled flash-based media uh, given the, the speed and performance that came to the table. Of course, NVMe came in as well uh, uh, with uh, the promise of of even higher speeds. And as we saw flash media uh, uh, really, really take a, a strong role in storage, uh, NVMe came around and, and uh, really was focused on trying to address that. Whereas SAS originated with hard drive technology, NVMe was really born out of uh, how, do we, how do we most efficiently deal with uh, flash-based media. Um, you know, SAS with its, uh, but SAS still carries a benefit on scalability, NVMe, uh, maybe uh, has, uh, I don't want to say challenges there, but um, it's definitely uh, was not designed as much to be broadly scalable across many, many, say hundreds or thousands of devices, um, but definitely addressed some of the performance uh, uh, issues that were coming up as flash media was becoming so, uh, uh, was, was increasing the overall storage performance that we could uh, experience, if you will. Let's talk about host interfaces, like PCIe. What's the significance there? Um, really, uh, the, all the storage in the world, all of the performance in the world and on the storage side is not of much use to you unless you can really feed it into the, into the beast, if you will, into the CPU and into this, the rest of the server subsystem. And that's really where PCI comes uh, into play. Uh, PCI, uh, originally was in parallel form and then uh, moved to serial with PCI Express as we know it today uh, and, and really has created a pathway uh, to, to, to enable um, not, not only storage performance but any other uh, adapter or any other networking or other, other types of technologies to just open up that pathway and feed the processor. If, if, uh, and, and as we've moved through uh, from PCI to PCI Express, PCI 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, um, and just opening up those pipes has really enabled um, just a tremendous amount of flow of data uh, into, uh, into the compute engine, allowing it to be analyzed, um, sorted, uh, uh, 
use to uh, um, uh, analyze uh, data, big data, uh, AI type applications. Just those pipes are critical in those types of applications. We know we've seen dramatic increases in performance going from one generation of PCIe to the next, but how does that translate into the worlds of SAS, SATA, and NVMe? Um, so uh, from a performance perspective, when we look at these different types of media, whether it be SATA, uh, SAS, or NVMe, um, of course, there are performance difference inherent in that media, uh, SATA being probably the lowest performing uh, with NVMe uh, uh, topping out at, at higher performing, although SAS can perform quite well uh, as a flash-based, you know, as a protocol connected to flash-based media. And of course, NVMe from a, a, an individual device scaling uh, from a BI1 to a BI4 interface, really, uh, that is where NVMe kind of has um, uh, enabled a, a bigger pipe directly to the storage media, uh, being able to scale up to by four, whereas SAS is kind of limited to by one, maybe by two in some cases, although most servers only connect the SAS device at by one. So from a difference perspective, then you're really wanting to create a solution or, or, or uh, enable the infrastructure to be able to consume that performance that NVMe is gonna give you. Uh, and I think that you know, that is something where our solutions have uh, really in, in the recent generations shined at their ability to really now uh, keep up with uh, storage performance in NVMe, uh, as well as uh, provide that connectivity back down into the SaaS and SATA world as well. Let's talk about your perspective on RAID today. So uh, there have been a lot of uh, views and opinions on RAID over the years. It's been, a, 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 and those have been changing over time. Uh, RAID has been around for a very, very long time probably about as long as, again, going back over my 30-year career. Uh, it's been around uh, for almost the entire time. Um, obviously, RAID originally was viewed as, as something that was uh, very, very necessary. Uh, devices fail. They don't last forever. Uh, but uh, the data that's on them uh, is very, very important, and people care about that. So RAID was uh, brought about uh, you know, knowing that individual devices that are storing that data are going to fail um, and uh, really took hold as a primary uh, mechanism of protection. Uh, but as time went on uh, and, and as performance moved up, uh, both in the server and both in, in the media itself, if we start talking about flash, uh, RAID really took on, people, people started to look at traditional server storage RAID uh, but with maybe a, a more of a negative connotation, I think that um, because, uh, to be quite honest, it, it fell behind a little bit. If you look at things like parity RAID, RAID 5 and RAID 6, a very, very effective and efficient means of uh, uh, protecting your data, um, very storage efficient, but ultimately had some penalties, uh, uh, primarily around write performance, uh, random writes uh, in RAID 5 volumes uh, was not keeping up with what really needed to be there and um, I think that really shifted uh, opinions of RAID that, hey, it's just, it's just not, uh, not going to keep up and we need to move on to other avenues. And, and, and we've seen that. We've seen disaggregated storage and other solutions pop up to protect your data. Obviously, in cloud environments and things like that have shown up and, uh, and, and they have been successful. But so one of the drawbacks with RAID is always the performance tax associated with generating parity for parity RAID. What has Broadcom done to address those potential bottlenecks? We've really uh, solved uh, the RAID performance issue, the write performance issue. We're, we're uh, in our latest generation of controllers, we're exceeding a million RAID 5 write IOPS, which is enough to satisfy uh, many, many, many applications. As a matter of fact, even in virtual environments, aggregated solutions where you have multiple applications. Uh, and then as well, uh, in the rebuild arena, we really uh, have, uh, uh, through our architecture, through our hardware automation, have been able to uh, move the bar on that to where the rebuild, not only the rebuild times have been brought down dramatically in SAS based, or in, in, I'm sorry, in flash based solutions, but the performance that you can observe while those rebuilds are going on is almost uh, 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 immeasurable. So in, in most applications, uh, you would almost observe no performance uh, deficiencies during a rebuild operation, which is really night and day compared to where things were just a few short years ago. So the fact that you've been able to dramatically decrease the time necessary for a RAID rebuild is obviously extremely important. But 
give us your overall performance philosophy from Broadcom's point of view. You know, over the years, we have recognized that performance is, is obviously critically important for our products. And the ability to uh, analyze performance from many, many angles is critically important. Um, there are literally infinite ways you can look at performance in a storage subsystem. Um, what we have uh, done in our uh, labs and, and in our solutions through not only hardware scaling in our, in our, uh, uh, in our labs, but also through automation scripts and things like that have allowed us to collect a substantial amount of data to look at uh, the performance of our solutions from every angle. Um, you know, IOPS, bandwidth, uh, application level performance, uh, small topologies, large topologies, uh, it just, just many, many aspects. It, it still honestly only scratches the surface of all the possible uh, 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 performance points that you could gather, but it, it has, uh, we have moved the bar dramatically in that regard. And, and it's something that our customers really demanded of us. Um, you know, storage technology has gotten uh, more complex uh, and you have to look at it from a lot of different angles, uh, especially on the performance front to make sure that there are no holes there uh, that somebody's going to run into. So based on specific customer needs and requests, you look at performance from a variety of different angles. Um, what are some of the trends that you're seeing specifically in storage performance today and moving into the future? Yeah, emerging trends uh, within the storage industry. I, I think that to look at the emerging trends, you really need to go back and look at where we started. Uh, we started uh, in compute uh, where people were you would have basically your, uh, your server that would be under the desk in a, in a small business operation and individual uh, businesses would have their own uh, set, of, set of servers and, and the storage would really be localized to those. Obviously the industry has, has recognized that, um, uh, that uh, to some extent disaggregation of that. We, we see that obviously in what's happening in a cloud, uh, in hyper-converged storage and things like that. Those afford a tremendous amount of flexibility uh, and, and, uh, and are, are obviously uh, great players in the storage uh, world today. But what, with that flexibility has come some sacrifice in performance and actually quite substantial sacrifice. And what we're observing is almost, uh, uh, it comes back full circle. The, uh, uh, the need for inbox high performing server storage that is well protected uh, and, and with people with confidence, that people have confidence that their data is protected and that they can uh, extract the performance that they need for the demanding database applications that still exist today and that still operate in, in the offices around uh, the country and around the world um, that uh, really need to protect their data on a local basis in the server. And um, I, I think that from a trend perspective, that's what we're seeing. We also, from the standpoint of NVMe store, NVMe itself is really uh, started out with, hey, we'll just software raid that. We'll just, we'll just wrap software around that. We can protect the data. Uh, we had so many customers come back to us saying, you know what, we really need hardware raid on NVMe. Um, and uh, when they came to us, we were ready. We had a solution ready to go and uh, we're able to uh, provide that. And now uh, we're seeing uh, ongoing on and demand. We, we are, we are complementary to other storage solutions out there. Uh, 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 server storage is, is not going to necessarily rule the world, but it is surely has a place uh, in the broader storage spectrum. And uh, we think we have the right solution for that. Speaking of servers and server-based storage, why would, for example, a Dell customer care about the Broadcom components in that Dell server? So uh, uh, let, let's say you're configuring a Dell server and you're going, why does, why does hardware RAID matter? What, what's important about that? Well, I think when you look at today's hardware RAID, uh, first of all, you're going to see uh, dramatically better performance. You're going to see dramatically better performance in, uh, uh, it's going to enable you to uh, put RAID 5 volumes, a very effective and efficient mechanism for protecting your data, a storage efficient mechanism. You're going to use RAID 5 volumes where you weren't able to do that before because uh, when you're in, in the millions of IOPS range, you really uh, uh, can satisfy a lot of application needs out there. And, um, and then you're gonna also going to have uh, rebuild times that are lightning fast. Uh, your performance is not going to degrade uh, when, you're, when you're running those application, 
especially database applications, but not, not only database, but uh, streaming applications. Uh, bandwidth uh, to, to protected RAID volumes is, is almost, uh, almost imperceptibly different from just raw bandwidth to the media. So the, the RAID, RAID configurations in today's Dell servers really afford you the opportunity to make use of that storage where you, you may not have, uh, you may have already written it off as well, RAID just doesn't, is not gonna get me there. Quite frankly, uh, into this, in, in the storage servers that uh, Dell is providing, uh, with, with RAID technology, uh, there are huge windows open in what you can do today with applications. Well, all of this is obviously good news for Dell and Dell customers. Thanks again, Andy, for joining us for this CUBE conversation. I'm Dave Nicholson for the CUBE. Thank you.